Let's talk about agar versus liquid culture. Um, I'm going to try not to talk too much about this because there's a lot to cover. But um, why do I like agar, agar so much? compared to liquid culture. Um, liquid culture, let's talk about the, the pros. Liquid culture gives you a ton of mycelium and uh, in the refrigerator it can last for a year, maybe even more. Um, so you get a lot and it propagates easily, you get a lot, it can stay viable for over a year in the refrigerator. You let it grow for about three weeks and then it stays viable and good for about a year. Maybe I've had them stay good for up to two years. Another pro is that it's very easy to make. Um, the formula or the recipe I use is just 350 milliliters of water with uh, 14 grams of sweetener, which can be uh, honey or agave or corn syrup. So, very easy to make. You just mix it together and uh, put it in the pressure cooker, sterilize it, and then take your, the easiest way is to already have a liquid culture syringe, stick it in here, put some in there, and it'll just spread in there. Um, you could cut a chunk of agar open it quickly, dump it in there, and it'll do the same thing. The thing is that you're, you may introduce uh, contaminants because you're opening it, but I've done it many, 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 many times without problems. Um, and if you don't have a liquid culture syringe to begin with, agar is the way to go. Do not, do not, do not ever, never, ever, ever put spores in here to make your liquid culture from spores it'll most likely contaminate and also as we know spore prints are a crapshoot do not use spores you got to use mycelium so uh cons negative side of it if you have contamination it's very hard to spot you can see sometimes some nasty colored stuff floating around, but many times you can't see it and it's contaminated. So before using it on your grain, you should put a couple drops in a Petri dish, agar, and if it grows clean, you're good. You can use it. Um, best way is to actually fill a syringe with this liquid culture, test from that syringe, and then you know that this syringe is still good, and uh, keep it separate. Now, so pretty much the, the only uh, negative aspect of it is that it's hard to spot contamination in there, but you get a lot, and it lasts a long time. Now, these are some of the AR cups that we've been using for the videos. This is the very first one where, if you remember, we took a round piece and a square piece uh, for the other transfer videos. And this thing is still going strong. Look at this stuff. And it hasn't even been, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator now. I left it outside just to see what it would do. 
uh, this was July 17. And uh, it still holds perfect. We can inoculate with this. But this is one of the best things about agar. Put this in the fridge. It'll also last about a year. Now here's the thing. There's a lot more mycelium in here than in here. So, pro, one of the best things about agar, it's very easy to spot contamination. This one has no contamination at all. It's beautiful, it's perfect. So they last a long time. You can easily spot contamination and uh, you can multiply your bread. You can multiply, take from here to another one, here to another one. For example, this one, look at all, we could get so much from this, so much, and put it into many different uh, agar cups. Just so you get an idea, this one that we inoculated in July 28th was not growing well. It was growing really wispy, not rhizomorphic at all. So I think if you see this one's a lot darker, I think it's because I put too much um, food coloring in there and the food coloring inhibited the growth. And so I took from the middle again, what I had put on there and cut it in four and put this in four different cups. And I got these four. And uh, these were all done August 5. So think about this. This was from July 28th. It wasn't growing well. I took four pieces from the middle from what I had put in here already and put it in four other agar cups. Now we can see that they grow different. This one is the best. Let's look in one. And probably this one. Then following this one and this one. Now, these are still good. There's no contamination here, not an issue. They look perfectly fine. From these, man, we could get from here, we could get some really nice uh, transfers. And imagine all the transfers I can do from here. So that's the best thing about agar that you can keep transferring out and multiplying it. it. It works amazing. It's really, really good. Um, now, if you recall, um, I made another video recently showing how to clone from a fresh fruiting body, from a fresh mushroom. We split it in half, took a piece, put it in here, put it in there. Um, Check this out. This is beautiful, very good looking mycelium growing from that little piece of tissue. It's not very rhizomorphic, but that usually happens when you're cloning from fruiting body, from tissue. We'll see when it gets all the way out if, uh, if it gets more rhizomorphic. Also, this is another one where I put a lot of um, food coloring in it. So that may be an issue. Um, to be honest, from now on, I'm not going to use any more food color. It doesn't look as pretty, but I just care about this prettiness. Look at that beauty. That's what I care about. I don't care about how nice it looks. It is better for um, instructional videos, so I may use it every now and then, but for my own... Uh, for my own work, I'm not going to use any coloring anymore. This was done on August 9th, and it's August 14th, and it's already growing very nicely. Now, the other one we did 
is a nasty mess. All those little bubbly things, that is nasty, nasty contamination, probably bacterial. Now on this side, that side is mycelium. So I'm, I'm gonna let it grow some more and see how it is when it gets to this side. Because we could get some from here onto another dish and, and salvage some of the uh, mycelium. But remember, this is why I always say, if you're gonna clone or do something like this or, or do some agar transfers, you need to keep your eggs in many baskets. Don't keep all your eggs in one basket because if I had done only this one, all that time and effort wasted. And uh, agar for me, it's easy to do or you can buy them already made, the Petri dishes. Um, so it makes no sense to make only one and, and roll the dice. See from two, we got one good and one bad. Still, we're probably gonna be able to get some from here, but this I would do only if I didn't have anything else. But look at all the agar that I have. Um, so again, agar versus liquid culture. A lot more. This is easy to multiply. Um, a lot easier to spot contamination. Um, once you get used to agar, it's just great. Now, the good thing about this, again, you can just keep taking from this and it goes a long way. Also, let's say that you're running out, make another one, get some from here, liquid culture from here, put it in the new one and keep going. Um, can't do it forever because of senescence it will get senile, it will get old and and stop uh, growing well. But this will last you a long time. So those are the pros and cons of liquid culture versus agar, the ones that I can think of at least. Hope this helps.